Welcome to Rogue Trader. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up. Hello and now for a short video on National Grid. This is part of the Greta Gold series and if you look at the top right hand corner here you'll see a link to that video. That series produced a short list of stocks. I'm doing a quick video on each of them before then getting down to a final short list. So National Grid are a large electric and gas utilities company. Actually, they're a bit of a monopoly situation. Obviously, there's only one national grid connecting all the homes in the UK to electricity generation. And national grid have a complete monopoly on that. Plus, also, they run the gas utility network as well. Because they are in a monopoly situation, they're regulated by a government body called Ofgem. And these introduce uh, these price controls. So the, the way it works out is a bit like a bit of a game where every five or six years, Ofgem get together with National Grid and they take a look at how much money they're making and at how much work they're going to have to do to maintain a good National Grid. And then they introduce price controls. So in effect, National Grid are only allowed to make so much money before giving back any cost savings to their customers. The next set of regulations are called the Rio 2 price controls and they start this year and they're all wrapped up as well in a lot of talk about how to modernise and change the National Grid in order to be able to cope with all this new renewable energy. So part of it is what they call being a electricity systems operator. And this is where we focus on the balancing of supply across the UK. So obviously, once we have the wind farms and stuff, they're going to need to put down new power lines to transfer that electricity from one part of the country to the other. There's also a lot of talk when I was looking at some of their recent updates and presentations on gas transmission, particularly to hydrogen. And it looks like one feature is going to be all of these excess wind turbines who produce electricity often when it's not actually needed. Um, that electricity is going to be converted into hydrogen. And they're talking about building new hydrogen pipelines to transport hydrogen across the country where it can be burnt where it's needed. And also where and also there's talk about the use of hydrogen being pumped into our actual uh, natural gas network so that people will have cleaner gas heating their homes because there'll be 40 percent hydrogen pumped mixed in. There'll be 40 percent hydrogen mixed in with the methane gas. We can see how their business breaks up here where 47% of their profits come from UK electricity transmission, then 12% from UK gas transmission, and then 32% from their US businesses where they have gas and electricity supply. So they aren't just a one trick pony. You know, there is a differentiation into gas and electricity. And then also they have this US business. So there is kind of scope for them to make money despite being kind of trapped with certain deals of the UK government. And they also have what they call National Grid Ventures, which accounts for 9% of the statutory operating profit. Now, these National Grid Ventures, the things like they've just actually bought a few wind farms, so actual uh, getting into the electricity generation. Then also they have these massive underground transmission. They have these massive underground networks that can send electricity from the UK to Northern Europe and vice versa. And so by building up these, that's also a separate business that they can make money from and they put into their ventures bucket. But it's stuff that isn't actually part of the deals they have to form with the UK government. And another interesting venture is they run the liquid natural gas terminal at Grain, where much of the liquid where much of the liquid natural gas arrives when it gets shipped to the UK. So one of their main obsessions is providing 
big dividends and they do provide juicy 5% dividends. So they are at their very heart a nice defensive stock. Um, and you can see how their share price is relatively stable. And then getting back to my main point, so they are considered a, def a highly defensive stock. And they do pay, you know, they have been paying nice 5% dividends. But then we've got this interesting aspect that they've got some potential upside from their ventures and from the US as well. Okay, so the financial year for National Grid it ends in the March of each year. So the 2020 was actually down from 2019. And in their H1 2021, that's actually a mistake there. It was down another 12%. And apparently they've linked this to COVID. And there was a big drop in electricity demand over the COVID lockdowns. And that to me is a very interesting macro indicator that kind of shows us independently how trashed the UK economy has been by the government action of introducing all these COVID lockdowns. And um, that is very interesting to see. But that has dropped their profits. And um, they are talking about, yes, we think next year when the lockdown stops and the whole economy recovers, the electricity use will, will recover and then they'll be making more money again. But that's like a risk factor that has to be built in. It's quite, it's impressive that they are making a net income of 1.3 billion every year. But right now they're in the midst, right now they've just finalized their Rio 2 price controls, which are going to be enforced from this year. So how has that been fudged by the government? Um, you know, is it going to mean that they'll be making less money than this one billion? Or have they managed to get a really good negotiation with the government bureaucrats? And in fact, they'll see even better income. And um, a lot of stuff tied into that deal, the Rio 2 deal, is actually the restructuring of the national grid for renewables. And it's just a, it's a real interesting trade-off if you know there'll be lots of um, free grants and money from the government for setting up new infrastructure um, and then the balance of how much new infrastructure they've got to build themselves and whether in the end it's going to be more money for national grid or less i got the impression from listening to their investor calls and questioning around this that we're talking like a five to ten to twenty year transition period so it's not like it's all going to happen next year but these are all the things to consider when looking at this stock so we see that they've got 49 billion of utility assets and this is considered very safe hard assets which is essentially the national grid network itself that you know if you're an investor or if you're a bank lending them the money or something that you know that these assets are solid, they're a monopoly situation, so they're protected unless a communist gets in power and nationalizes the company, of course. But apart from that, they're generally protected hard assets that almost guarantee a return of 15 billion in revenue and 1 billion in net income a year. And then, then we come down, and then we come down and see their debt. Now, I always hate companies with big debt, and we see here that National Grid have 27 billion billion in debt. And I noticed that even in the half one this year and stuff, that debt profile seems to be only increasing. And and on the face of it, it's supposed to be cool that national grid are able to have 27 billion in debt because their 49 billion of assets are considered so solid and the future returns considered almost like guaranteed um but still you know it is a lot of debt so overall it's a real mixed bag um for sure national grid are going to be right in the center 
of the green revolution that's happening in the UK over the next 10 to 20 years. They are, in a lot of ways, the most important part. However, they're kind of such a moving target with all these different things to consider. There's a Rio 2 price controls. There's is the investment they're going to have to put in in order to meet the new expectations going to end up in them losing money or after the new network set up is it going to be a lot more pro profitable for them so in the end i'm definitely going to put them in my final short list because they are such an important part that it could be interesting to invest in them if i can determine that they really are going to profit from this it's going to be a lot of work to dig into all the detail but i think it's well worth doing and well worth doing a more detailed analysis on national grid because what i learn from analyzing national grid will then help me understand all the other renewable stocks a lot better so yes these are definitely going into my final short list and i have to say um, these kind of defensive stocks like utilities are kind of considered the more boring stocks but when i actually uh, researched them i found them actually really interesting what they get up to and all the stuff going on just you can flick a switch and the lights go on in your house